have been knitting for one year. So let's take a look at everything that I've knit. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Korean Knits channel. My name is Erin and I'm so excited you've joined me here today. Today I will be sharing everything I've knit in my first year of knitting. I started knitting in May of 2021 in the midst of I think our third lockdown here in Ontario and I have not stopped since and I'm so excited to share all the knits that I have. Um, some of them will be photos, I don't have them all with me anymore, um, but I'm going to put on and share about everything I possibly can and just bring you along on the first year of knitting. That's why I'm in jeans and a bra top. Of course it is the hottest day we've had so far and I'm going to try on just oodles of knitwear. Um, but yeah, I'll just be putting everything on on top of this and we're going to try and go as fast as possible. But by my count, we have like 50 items. So um, I've been knitting nonstop for a year and honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way. Speaking of, the first sweater I actually made was a bellish sweater. So I had been familiar with knitting and purling and I had done it off and on throughout teenage, early 20s. Um, and so I just jumped right in with the sweater because that's what I was passionate about. And I actually started with the Bella shop. And so I will put a photo of it in front of you here. I don't have it anymore. I think I donated it. Um, and I don't know why I donated it. I was just not wearing it and I didn't want to have something in my closet that I wasn't wearing. Um, it was made out of some unknown thrifted yarn, which I think was acrylic. Um, and it was like black with specks and it was just this very simple raglan sweater. It was the first time I had learned about right leaning increases and left leaning increases. And um, honestly, for a first sweater, I think it turned out really, really well. So of course, um, then I started getting involved in the YouTube community and watching people and everyone was talking about cardigan number seven this guy right here and so i jumped right in and decided to make myself a cardigan number seven now while i was getting into the world of knitwear i didn't quite understand um the world of like good yarn yet and so this is another acrylic let me just look here so this is red heart super saver fleck and i actually really like the yarn so you might be able to tell but i was twisting my stitches and I know most people twist their pearls when they first start knitting and I was actually twisting my knits and I don't remember how I was knitting but I actually really like the look of the twisted knit on this sweater but here, here's my problem I found out through a um I think a reddit post that I was twisting my knits and so I just stopped <laughs> like halfway down the arm of the sweater where is it yeah from here to here you can tell I start knitting normally from here down. And so the sweater kind of looks a little weird. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure the only one that notices it be, because it's acrylic, um, it's just really warm. And I also didn't really know what I was doing with the yarn overs. And so my buttonholes are not very like good buttonholes. Like there's just not a lot of hole there. Um, so the buttons don't work really well. And for whatever reason, I chose like the smallest buttons. But I mean, other than that, I think it's pretty good for a first cardigan, you know? But honestly, I haven't worn it too much. I'm just kind of keeping it as a relic of how far I've come. But the cool thing about me not knowing I was twisting my knits is I got a nice twisted rib on the edging here and I didn't even know what I was doing. So that's fun. But you can tell I figured out that I was twisting my knits because by the time I went to do the collar or this part, they're not twisted anymore. So yeah. Just a little fun sweater right there. So next I wanted to try my hand at some cables and I ended up making this hat from some yarn um, that my mom had lying around in her house. And you know what, it's not too bad. I don't really wear it, um, but you can see the cabling up here, but you can see I ribbed for a long time with the intention of wanting to flip it up, but then I ran out of yarn. And so um, I have to wear it like this. And honestly, like on camera, it doesn't look too bad. But in person, it just really bothers me how big these go up. And I think I was still twisting my stitches here. I can't tell. 
but the yarn is super duper thick and is another acrylic yarn and I don't even have this listed on Ravelry um but this hat I've kind of been holding on to for a while it's my first attempt at cables and it's a braided cable and honestly it's not too bad it's not obviously the best of work but um yeah hat and then I just wanted to learn absolutely everything there was to know about knitting so what do I try next lace so this is the next top that I made. It was the very first time I went into a yarn store, like a proper LYS to buy a yarn. And I was looking specifically for cotton because as I said, I started knitting in May. So I think I made this around June, July. Um, it was warm. So I needed something cooler and I made this top. So this is the Provence top. It's by Ekaterina Vorobeva. I almost definitely butchered that. She is a Russian knitter who lives in Germany. I follow her work. I absolutely love her designs. Um, this is knit in a worsted Estelle yarns cloud cotton. So for a first time doing lace, doing a worsted lace I think was really good. And I'm really proud of how this turned out. Honestly, I think there's a few mistakes in the lace here, but the pattern was pretty simple. It's like a four, no six, I think, six stitch re repeat for each of these and it's pretty easy. Um, I ended up modifying the sleeves to um, crochet them and you can see the back. I wore this a lot, a lot, a lot in the summer um, and I'm excited to wear it again this summer. Obviously now I can see some of the things that are wrong with it, but it being a cotton, um, it's pretty breezy. Um, I will say on like the hottest of summer days, it is a little warm just because it's a worsted weight. Um, it's a, definitely a thick t-shirt, but I really like the way it looks. Um, I would love to make it again actually in a DK weight and um, I would love to try her sleeves. So the original sleeves come down to here and it's all of this lace all the way down, but I had made a size too big because I didn't know how gauge swatching worked yet. Um, and I still don't always gauge swatch, by the way. Um, so it's just a little big and I started doing the sleeves on one of the sides and it just looked like I was drowning in the shirt. But I think just finishing it up this way, I think it just provides the perfect slouchy everyday shape. Um, and I think doing this in more of a DK weight, um, maybe something with silk in it would provide a little bit more drape and would hopefully be able to tuck into dresses. Um, I'll try with the jeans right now, but tucking this in, it's just a little too thick to look natural if you tuck the whole thing in. It kind of bulges in a weird way. And so I prefer to wear it um, not tucked and with jeans. So the next thing I made is this vest number three by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Um, this was knit in Drops Wish. And um, she, her original vest number three is knit with, I think, four strands of yarn. And I remember staring at this pattern, like there are four yarns listed. Does she hold all four yarns or is she suggesting different yarns? And I didn't understand yarn weights and I didn't understand that like you'd hold certain yarns together to make a specific texture. And I didn't understand that like different yarns are made out of different things for their property and it affects drape. And so I was like, this fits gauge. This is the right thickness. I'm going to go with this. <laughs> And so mine ended up very different, um, but it does follow the pattern. And this is where I fell in love with Drops um, Wish. And this would later lead me to um, discover Drops Air, which is basically um, the same. So Drops Wish is a super bulky. Drops Air is basically the worsted equivalent. And it is what, still to this day one of my favorite yarns and super affordable. Um, but I picked up this yarn when I was in Vancouver over that summer at one of their local yarn stores and I um, just love the color of it. I will say that um, surprisingly on this one more than the lace, um, you can tell uh, I was a new knitter, especially on the back. Um, you know what, I'll hold it up so you can see, um, but there is some like dropped stitches and some gained stitches and you can just tell that I wasn't, um, used to reading my stitches. I couldn't, I didn't know how to read my stitches. Um, even though this is a sweater vest, I often just wear it like this with a pair of jeans or a skirt just over top. It is a little warm in summer, but around 20 degree days, I don't find it too, too bad. And it's like 
the softest thing. Um, that said, I think I am going to rip this out and re-knit it. Um, maybe not this exact vest. I might do a v-neck. I'll show later. I ended up doing a modified um, vest number three. Um, again, one of my favorite things knitwear, and I might do that again because I really love the shape of it. Um, but I love this yarn so much, and um, I'm just worried I won't get as much wear out of it now because um, I'm a little picky about my stitches looking right. But yeah, anyway, I still love this thing. I think it's an amazing vest to try if you are looking for a bulky, really quick knit. So next up, I made another hat. Um, this hat was made out of some hand dyed yarn that I found in Collingwood that I will look up the name of and drop down below. And um, I made this hat. So this was another attempt at cables. You can see I was much more successful this time. This is a free pattern. Um, and I will also have to put it on the screen because I don't remember what it is. It was my first time doing a palm like this. Um, and while I really like the hat, I don't love the way that this yarn ended up working. So I was holding it double and um, just the way it ended up marling in some places. You can see I've got some definite striping and some marling and then some striping again. And I just don't think that this yarn was suited to be held double in this way. And I just don't love the way that it ended up looking, even though I love the fabric that it made held double. So I think I will be ripping this out and using the yarn for other things. I still have a lot of yarn left. I'm using it to make a sock right now. Um, and I think it's much more better when it's held single and just goes round in a small circumference because it, the marling is much, much better. I just think this yarn is much better suited for that kind of marling instead of this kind of marling. So yeah, and I got another yarn in um, Collingwood and this started my obsession with lol my project weekend um so this is the bandana cowl by pearl soho and it looks like this i wear it under jackets in the winter a lot um and it is beautiful um it's a really simple pattern it's really quick to make it's made out of bulky weight yarn and you just do short rows um so this is my first time ever doing wrap and turns and um I just love, love, love the look that it made. Still have never weaved in ends. Um, but yeah, it looks like this. So you can see um, kind of where those turns and things were happening. Um, yeah. Anyway, I am obsessed with this. I wear it all the time. Um, I would love to make more of it. I'm obsessed with this yarn. It is held up just so... I wore this almost every day in the winter and I have not deep held it. And look, look at this, look at this. Um, seriously, so good. Um, I have bought more lol yarn. I want to buy even more lol yarn. I know they're working on new colors for fall. So excited. I wish they'd make smaller weights. Like I'd love a DK weight, but it's an alpaca and wool blend, Peruvian. And I am just like, just obsessed. Um, but yeah, so anyway, made this bandana cowl and then I went in for another sweater. And what am I going to do, of course, if I am getting involved in YouTube? Um, I am going to make a weekender. <laughs> so this was my very first Knit Picks order. And this is a Wool of the Andes Worsted um, by Knit Picks. And... I love the yarn, love the feel, like the pattern in theory, never wear this sweater. Um, I think it turned out really well. I think I actually knit it quite well for the level of knitting that I was at. You can tell there's some pilling on the bottom here and that pilling is from not even wearing it that much. That's not the thing that bothers me. What bothers me is this neckline. It is a boat neck. Some people have no problem with it. I despise it. It kind of like creeps up your neck as you're wearing it. And I find myself constantly just doing this. And you don't want to do that when you're out and about. I do love the length that I chose for it. It fits, sits right at the pant line. And that's where I love my sweaters to hit. So I wear them with skirts, I wear them with jeans, and I almost never wear anything that's not high-waisted. So that's where I want all, almost all of my sweaters to hit is right here. And I'm quite short. So that makes knitting sweaters a bit easier for me because I only have to do 
like 10 inches, 10, 11 inches down from the armhole. And it's like, that's nothing. So um, I remember this was also my first knit that I went to the movies with. So that's nice. Um, and just knit round and round and round. Um, if you look really closely, like right there, I missed some of the slip stitches, but I mean, that's not the end of the world. Um, I think I will be ripping this out after this video and reusing this yarn for something else because I love the color. I love the color on me. You can probably tell by my surroundings. Big fan of green, big fan of anything more natural looking. Um, but yeah, it's such a shame because I really do love this detailing on the shoulder. Um, but I just don't know how I'd be able to rip it out and create a round neck out of this. I know she does have like a round neck almost equivalency pattern. This is by Andrea Mowry. Um, but I don't know. I think I'd have to rip out the sleeves to fix the neckline, no? Because it's, they're picked up. Anyway, I'll probably just end up ripping this out and reusing the yarn because I do quite like it. So while I was still in a cotton kick, um, I saw everyone talking about shawls and I figured I should give it a go. And um, I didn't have long enough needles to make a proper shawl, length shawl. Um, so I ended up doing this. In a wild turn of events, my building is not actually on fire. Cheers. So anyway, the camera angle changed. I apologize. It's been, it's been a while. But shall we continue? Where was I? <laughs> Shawls. So, um, watching the peoples on YouTube, I'm like, oh, I need to do a shawl. It's the right of every knitter to make a shawl. And I was like, in the winter, I don't like being overly hot. You put on a big jacket, you have a sweater underneath. It's too much, too many layers. You need a light scarf. I'm gonna make it out of cotton. What I didn't understand is the properties of wool. This was early in fall. And I was like, oh, I need to breathe. I didn't understand that wool breathed. So I hadn't lived the joy of putting on a hand knit sweater in the depths of winter. I didn't understand. And so I made this, which is a bit of a travesty, if I'm being honest. Um, I didn't have long enough needles to make it. So this is what ultimately spurred me to get um, interchangeables because it was just really sad. <laughs> um, so I was using, um, what are they called? Prim ergonomic needles, which I still love, but they're only 36 inches around or something. And obviously when you get to the edge here, you're holding like a lot of yarn. And so this is as big as I could possibly make it. And it's not like shawl size, <laughs> like I can't, really wear it. I guess I could wear it kind of as a bandana, but I mean, I haven't. I guess I could tie it back there, but like, it's just not, I and mean, you can't wrap yourself in it because like, it's pathetic and it's made out of cotton. So it's like nothing. So I haven't even weaved in the ends, which is a bit of a theme for me. Um, and it's also made partly out of like dishy <laughs> cotton because they didn't understand there's like different kinds of cotton so like this is cotton this is bamboo this is the weird knitters cotton again dishy cotton again bamboo bamboo cotton cotton so like i mean that said i have excellent color choice actually could i wear it as a shirt that looks terrible anyway so i've just had this sitting around i might undo it eventually i mean i do love Love the marling in this yarn here. So, I mean, it's dishy. It can make some amazing dishcloths. It's not actually dishy brand. It's just like intended for dishcloths. Um, so maybe I'll undo it all and just make some beautiful dishcloths so I can look at this marling some more. I do actually have more of this. Um, I grabbed two skeins and it went further than I thought I would. But I did understand triangle shawl shaping and I was excited by it. And so I made another one this time out of some wool. Oh, you know what? This came later. Regardless, I'm going to show it now. So anyways, this is actually a full size shawl. Do I wear it? Obviously not. I haven't weaved in the ends. I don't really get shawls. I could, I have wrapped myself up in it like this a few times. 
I think if I were to make another shawl and make it really oversized and do like the, the, the thing, the, uh, Outlander thing where you kind of tuck it in. Actually, I kind of like that. That's a look. I mean, not with this, but like it's a look. Um, but anyways, this is made out of Cascade 220 and this was made after the sweater I'm about to show you. But I had actually thrifted most of this Cascade 220. So this brown here and this green were thrifted and then this gray is left over from a sweater I will show next. And so I decided to make this. It's another boneyard shawl. Honestly, I'll make a boneyard shawl again. I think it's really simple shaping. It's by Stephen West and um, I just decided to stripe it. And I quite like it. Um, right now it sits on top of a stool and it is my dog's blanket and he loves it. But I'm really impressed by like how much he's like stepped on it and stuff. It's holding up really, really well. Um, so yeah, it would definitely make again. And it has some good drape on it too. Yeah, let's move on to sweaters. So um, I made the Weekender on an Andrew Mowry kick. I decided to make the throwover next. Um, what I didn't realize is that the throwover is probably the worst way to try color work ever because it's three colors color work in some rows so you can see it some rows where like the color spikes up there are actually three colors going on in there and um that's a lot for your first time doing color work and it definitely does buckle a little bit and if you can tell from the inside my floats aren't the neatest um but you know what for first time i still wear this sweater i still like this sweater um and to have a wearable color worked yoke sweater I'm not mad at it. Um, I'm really happy with the colors that I chose. So this color, um, this is Cascade 220, and then these are Estelle Worsted. Um, these are, they have the same gauge, um, but these have some acrylic in them, and they smell amazing. I don't know what it is about this Estelle, but it smells so good. And so I love wearing this sweater because it smells so good, and I can't tell you why. Um, this and the weekender, I had to re-knit the sleeves because when I first started knitting, I was knitting all of my sleeves too short. So they were like here, but they were also, um, I didn't, I didn't think I liked long ribbing. And I don't know what I was thinking, but the ribbing on all of them, I was just like tired of doing sleeves. They were like teeny tiny. And I would convince myself like, oh, that looks great, but it looks stupid. And so I had to go back and re-knit all of the sleeves on these sweaters. <laughs> but you know what? It's the better for it. Um... And you can tell I usually just do a crocheted bind off. I just can't be bothered. Um, but I really love the way this sweater looks. I would absolutely make another one. She does a throw over cardigan. And I might make that one next because I definitely need more cardigans in my wardrobe. Um, but I actually really like the color work on this. You can tell, maybe on camera, maybe in here. You can tell it's buckling a little bit. I didn't go up a needle size for the color work, which I would do if I were doing this again. And um, yeah, you can definitely tell, but I really aggressively blocked this out. And honestly, it doesn't bother me. And I've talked to some knitters while wearing this and no one's been like, oh, your sweater's buckling. You know what I mean? So it's not enough that it bothers me. Also, I didn't know about drawless. So you can tell on the back where it goes from row to row. And I think if I were to knit this again, I would look a lot more into the um, jogless color placement because it really bothers me that line in the back. You can very much tell it's a hand knit. Um, but yeah, I love, it looks a little bit 70s inspired with the colors and um, I'm just really impressed with this sweater. Next. You know we have to try all the great designers. And so next, I went for a petite knit design. Um, so this is, I talked about Drops Air and how much I loved Drops Wish. And this is made out of Drops Air. It is the Sunday sweater. And I remember being kind of torn up on to, as to whether to make this sweater or not because I loved the idea of the yoke. And I loved that so many people had used Drops Air for it. Um, but in some people's, so basically the sweater is made with a um, ribbed design that gets bigger. So you go like knit one purl one and then you add one to the knits and then add one to the purls and at the end you're doing I think knit four 
pearl for, something like that. And that's how you make the yoke. It's a really clever design. Um, but for some people where it switches from pearls to knits, it's a really, really stark line. And I didn't want a super stark line. And I think that because this yarn is so fluffy, it didn't create that effect. And so, um, if you're knitting the sweater, I would encourage you to use mohair or use something like drops air so that you don't get that jog. Um, most people hold drops air with mohair, but I didn't want to spend that much money. And um, so I actually just held it with a strand of thrifted black fingering weight wool. And so I held that through at the body and honestly, I love the way it looks. It gives the drops air just a little bit more structure. Um, and yeah, I was really worried about using a fingering weight instead of a lace weight, but I think it worked out just fine. And then the sleeves, I did just drops air. So I actually, you can tell a little bit where it drops down here, um, but I wanted the sleeves to be a bit breezier. I used exclusively drops air on the sleeves and I am absolutely loving the way that it turned out. Um, so I just did, so the typical sweater has um, balloon sleeves, but I just did straight down and then cuffed it. And I love the way the sweater turns out. It's I think the longest sweater I have just because this yarn grows so much. Um, but because it's, I think the only black, well, I have another black sweater, but I'll explain what happened with that one. Um, <laughs> This is the one I probably wear the most just because it's black and goes with everything. I wear this outfit all the time, actually. Just jeans, sweater, you're good to go in the winter. Um, it is extremely warm, which is nice in the dead of a Canadian winter. And yeah, I'm really impressed with this. I would absolutely make this again. Um, yeah, really love it. So in the meantime, I was making some hats. So we're coming up on Christmas. I was making hats for my family for Christmas. Um, I've given it to them. I don't have photos of them. I should have taken photos of them. It was before I got really involved on Instagram and on YouTube, so I don't have photos, but I made three hats. And these are hats that I made for them that I didn't like enough and I didn't give them. So the first is this hat. So this you may recognize is the Wool in the Gang. They are like super thick wool. They were selling kits to make this hat at indigo and I was like oh well I might as well try it and yeah just looks like this I will be honest I never wear it it's in seed stitch um and I don't mind the stitch so much as this wool is like insanely thick look at that it's a super bulky but it's like super bulky <laughs> You know what I mean? I think it would be much more suited to home wear than it is for wearables. I just find that this hat is too warm on my head and I will never wear it. It doesn't breathe. Um, I think because it was knit, it was knit on 12 millimeter circulars that came with the, the kit. And um, I think this yarn should be used with bigger. I think this yarn could probably go with 15 um, millimeter circ circulars and I just think it needs to breathe. Like, look how dense this fabric is. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I've been just holding on to it. I've worn it a handful of times. It's black. It's nice. But, um, oh yeah. And I didn't know how to do the, <laughs> um, and anyway, this hat's just chilling. A hat that I do actually wear is this hat. So I had made this intended for my mom and ended up keeping it for me because I didn't love the way that the ribbing went. I thought you'd be able to do this with it. And then I made it too short. And yeah, so this is called the March Hat. It is by Megan Babin. And this is um, in uh, Thrifted Drops Baby Merino in the gray color. And it is just a beautiful, what do you call this? This, it's not lace. It's like, it's just a pattern stitch. Um, and I quite like it. Um, Megan Barton, is it Barton? Ba Babin, sorry, Megan Babin, I've got my computer in front of me, has um, a hat pattern for every month. So this is March's hat, and she has a lot of other hats that are really lovely, actually. Um, the other thing is that this hat is meant to um, have a lot more structure to it, and this is a sport weight yarn. I think it recommends a sport weight yarn. Let's check a worsted weight yarn 
Oh, I held it double. Oh, I held it double. I held a sport weight double, which was probably my problem. <laughs> so it ended up a little bit big and it's slouchy is the whole point, but I'm fine with the slouch. I'm okay with the slouch, um, but that's another reason I didn't end up giving it to my mom. I think it suits me better and I gave her one that I think suits her better. So that's this hat. I do actually wear it quite a bit. I just, um, none of my coats particularly match it. So it ends up being more of a fall hat when I can do sweater and hat instead of coat and hat. Yeah, I think we are in to about Christmas time now. So just over the halfway point, I think. Yeah, yeah, let's get into Christmas knits. Okay, so the first thing I started around December um, is in all over cabled sweater and it is still a whip so let me just pull it out of the bag here and it is beautiful and I would love to finish it look at this it is just so pretty and I just got distracted by other things and I'm still distracted by other things and now it's like out of season to even be knitting on this but I like the yarn is so nice I should save the pattern. So this is the Snow Crocus by Midori Hurkose, and it's in blue sky fibers, woodstock, wool stock, worsted. And I love this yarn. It smells amazing. It's just like a slight step up from something like Cascade 220. And I mean, look at that design. Um, I was really getting away on this, and then I got onto my very first... Oh no, I didn't. I just got other yarn, and I got distracted. I got yarn for Christmas and I just wanted to cast it on and then I never went back to this, which is really sad. Um, but anyways, I would love to pick this up again. I have a feeling it might be in hibernation until maybe August now, just because I've got, been getting really into summer knits and I don't wanna limit myself. But I am I am in high hopes that I will have this sweater for fall fall I will have this sweater for fall um yeah the other thing is is that you stop knitting the body when you split and then you do the sleeves first and I think I just lost steam on the sleeves but I'll, I'm gonna go back to it I'm really excited to finish it I have a lot of experience with um this double moss stitch now and it's one of my favorite stitches of all time so I think having something else in this stitch that I love it will make me even more excited to come back to this so it will stay in hibernation for now but it is with great sadness and great remorse that I didn't finish it when I started because there, there's honestly been so many outfits that I've been like oh that snow crocus sweater but works so well with this and I can't wear it because it's not done and I just keep this in a little project weekend bag it's what the yarn comes in it's a great project bag Next, um, we have the thing that first made me kind of was my grand entrance into the knitting community on Instagram, and it is this beautiful sweater. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Every time I look at it and wear it, I just fall even more in love with this thing. So this started my obsession with um, Sorry Nordland. And this is, of course, her Lume sweater. And um, this is yarn that I had gotten for Christmas. And it's Cascade 220. Um, this color is thrifted, but the rest of them were bought. And I love the way that these colors look together. Um, this pattern is traditionally made with um, one... Let's not put this on backwards here. Yeah. Um, with only two colors. So it's intended to be a two-color color work sweater um and i think hers is black and then white for all the color work i decided to do a three color color work i really wanted to play with color and just see how they looked together and i'm so pleased with the way it came out um, and i've gotten a lot of lovely comments on this sweater people wanting to um, replicate what i've done and i am just so thrilled with it um, it's oversized. Um, my gauge went way off in the middle. Um, so she originally knit this with Cascade 220. I gauge swatched for it and I got um, below gauge and so I upped my needles from hers and then I went way over gauge. <laughs> so 
So I, I think I should have done the original needles that she had because of course we're using the same yarn. I think now that I've tested um, some of our other patterns, we have very similar um, tension when we knit, I think. And so I would just go with what she recommends. But anyways, I'm actually thrilled by the oversized look of this sweater. I would love to knit this again. I would love to do a two color version like she had intended, but um, this is the sweater I reach for most often. It's the one that I kind of snuggle up with um, most often. It's definitely pilling, um, if you can tell. Oh yeah, you can tell there. Um, I will say Cascade 220 definitely pills, um, but nothing that's unmanageable. And I adore, 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 adore this sweater. It's one of my favorites. I'm so sad to be sending it into hibernation for summer, but I know I will be all the more thankful when I pull it out again in fall. So around this time, I was finding a lot of obsessions actually. And um, one of them is this little guy. Um, so this pattern is the Musselboro hat by Yisul de Teague. And it is just my favorite hat pattern of all time. I've now made three. I plan to make infinitely more. Um, so basically you knit a tube like this and then you turn it inward. And I'll show you my third one. Because if you knit it long enough, you can also cuff it up. Um, but this one obviously isn't. This looks like, I look like a GTA boy with the hat. It's not a look for me. <laughs> But I wore this a lot in the summer or in the winter um, just because it's a very classic hat and um, this was my first attempt at dyeing. So around this time I was really wanting to knit some things from stash. I developed quite a large stash mostly from thrifting but of course I did buy some yarn as well and one of the things that I thrifted is this beautiful sprinkle yarn. Um, so this is the We Are Knitters Marrow wool, which is their superwash version of the wool. And I managed to thrift five skeins of this. This was originally actually a vest and I had never worked with superwash before. And as the saying goes, it did grow three sizes that day. Um, I ended up uh, wearing it once, then blocking it. And the vest sleeves were no joke down to my hips. Um, and obviously that's not the ideal vest to have. So I ended up frogging it and then making this sweater. This is my first and only self-drafted design and it is in a broken rib and has quite the dramatic fold down from the arms. It is a simple raglan. Um, and the reason that I self-drafted it is just because I wanted control over how much yarn I was using because I knew I only have five skeins and to do a sweater that's a little difficult sometimes so I did end up shortening the sleeves to a three quarter length which is fine and again doing a cropped body which is my usual anyways. I did um, twisted rib going into the broken rib design and I actually really love the way that this sweater turns out. I don't think I'll ever make it into a pattern because it's honestly extremely simple and I'm sure someone else has done if not this exact thing then something extremely similar um, but I'm really happy to have been able to create my own pattern and I love the way it looks. Um, this yarn isn't necessarily something I would have chosen if I were to choose any color of this wool for myself but I got five skeins of it for $35 <laughs> so um, it was a bargain and I have no complaints. I do wear this sweater quite a bit. It's super soft. It pills like crazy. Um, I think my dog sheds a lot. This sweater sheds to the in the degree. Like <laughs> it's really wild how much it sheds. So I um, have to be careful about what pants I'm wearing with it. Um, but honestly, most often in the winter, I wore this over top of a black dress. And even though it did shed a little bit, I just would bring my lint roll around and it was fine. The only thing is I couldn't take the sweater off the dress if I got hot because it would just be white. Um, <laughs> so keep that in mind if this is a wool that you would like to try. I quite like it. I don't think I would buy it at full price. I think it's expensive for what it is and um, I would like to see what We Are Knitters does as a company next. So um, that said, the next item that I made, I will show on the screen here. It is um, another attempt at a cardigan number seven. 
in um, Drops Air, which is a yarn that a lot of people use for that sweater. I don't remember if it's the original yarn for that sweater. But anyways, I made the whole body and for whatever reason, it was floppy. Like really floppy. <laughs> and I was trying it on and I wasn't in love. And so I frogged it. Because Drops Air is one of my favorite yarns and I didn't want to waste it on something that I knew I wouldn't get a lot of wear out of. I'll show you what I've been using it for later, but I did make a body of that. Next, working on stash yarn again, I made this vest, which I lovingly call my vest 2.5. It is made out of thrifted yarn. It is Cascade 220 and um, Ice Yarns Alpaca. Um, so the drops, or no, the Cascade is the brown and the Ice Yarns is the white. Both are thrifted at different times. I held them together for a marl. So this is um, my favorite things knitwear, vest number two for the shape and vest number three for the gauge. And so I have both patterns. I combined them both to make this cropped V-neck. And I often wear this over top of shirts, not on its own, although definitely it could be on its own. And that vest that I showed at the beginning, I think I'm going to re-knit it into something that looks like this. Um, this is somewhat self-drafted. So obviously I was following two patterns, but mashing them together with my own gauge. So um, anyway, ends up looking like this. Did I write it down? No. So I'll have to redo the whole thing again if I do end up doing that. I have regrets, I'm not gonna lie, but sometimes you gotta knit serendipitously. Speaking of knitting serendipitously, I <laughs> I decided to make another bandana cowl because I use the other one so much. And I made it out of leftover drops air from the Sunday sweater. And I held two together and I like the fabric. I knit it at much bigger gauge. And I was like, oh, it'll just be an oversized bandana cowl. It looks dumb. Like it doesn't look dumb here. But like, it's got so much room, look at that, that like, I can't, it doesn't properly tuck into, tuck into jackets. And I was thinking I'd make a cowl more like, more like this, but it's not wide enough for that either. And because of the gauge, it's like really flippy. And it's just not, it's just not it. I wore it a couple times. I'm definitely gonna frog it. And I still want to make this um, beautiful yarn into a cowl because I love wearing it close to skin. Um, but it's going to be a different cowl because this was a dumb idea. This was just stupid. Um, but anyways, I made this too. I like it in theory. In practice, I would have to have a much larger neck, head, body to make this work. I don't even know if it could work for a human, but it just doesn't. It doesn't work for anyone. And... That's that. Sometimes you have knitting fails. I need to be generous with myself. It was my first year of knitting. Everything is my first year of knitting. But as you can tell, I'm very particular with what I like and what I don't like. Next, I made another thing that I frogged. I will put another thing on the screen. It is my first ranunculus and I did it out of um, a sport weight yarn by Manos del Uruguay. Um, it is their Milo yarn and it's a yarn that I love. Have it in the stash now because spoiler alert i frogged it and um i just didn't love the way it fit on me i didn't i didn't think i'd wear it i think the ranunculus for me is a pattern that is firmly a worsted weight pattern if you're not familiar it's a pattern that can be knit anywhere from fingering weight to worsted weight and it just affects the density of the fabric and i think for that pattern in particular i like a dense fabric i bought a ranunculus to show a little bit later but um that is just how i feel about that but anyways, I frogged that project. Um, that yarn is still waiting for something special. I think it will end up being a summer top because it has linen in it. Um, and I love the yarn. I just want to make sure I'm doing it justice. Um, let's get into my very first test knits and they are all sweaters. So I entered 2022 wanting to get into test knitting and I applied to a whole bunch thinking I probably wouldn't get any because I had never test knit before and I ended up getting two. And of course they are both cabled sweaters. <laughs> so the first one is from, sorry Nordland, and this is out now. 
oh, I just love this sweater so much. So this is in my beloved Cascade 220 again, and this is called the Marzipan Pullover. It was the first test knit I had ever done. It is the most cabling I've ever done in my life. And look at this. It is stunning. Um, I was really nervous, originally a little bit nervous about it. Um, just because on some people, this cabling ends like here. And I don't really know what they're, like, it must be a different torso shape sort of situation, but I really love the mine ends like right at the bust. And then you just go down from there. And the detailing on the sleeves too, it is just such a beautiful, well thought out pattern. This is the pattern that cemented my immense love for Story Nordland patterns. I have since knit I'm knitting one right now. I've got another one to show. And I just think that she's so beautifully intentional with the things that she designs. And I am beyond in love with this sweater. Um, I ended up with this dark plum color and I'm not usually a purple person at all. Um, but for whatever reason, this aubergine color was speaking to me. And I, I don't know, I quite like it. Um, I'm not sure it particularly suits me, but you know, I'd like to one day have sweaters in every color of the rainbow. So, um, yeah. And I all, honestly, I was thinking I would do this in like a grayish, but I always lean towards grayish. Um, but I think that this is something different for my wardrobe. And you know what? If I end up wanting it in a different color, I can always knit it again. That's the beauty of knitting. So anyway, the other test knit that I did. Ooh, got a light right there. <laughs> usually too short to reach um is for fine fiber co and this is the kenley pullover it looks like this it is again almost all over cables and when it's not cables it is a double mossed stitch pattern and so it is was quite an involved knit um it was originally really cropped, like up here cropped, and I blocked it and it like grew. Um, and I'm really happy about that. So I knit this in two strands of Knit Picks palette and one strand of Knit Picks Andean, no, Alpaca Cloud Lace. And the Alpaca Cloud Lace is just a little bit lighter and it creates a very, very subtle marled effect. I love the color of this sweater. This yarn was intended for a different sweater. I'm so glad that I put it towards this one. And since I made it, I've actually worn it quite a bit. Um, there are actually some problems with it. I go into it more in the podcast, but I ended up screwing up this. This was supposed to be on the inside. I don't mind it on the outside. Um, also, my cables don't quite match up. Is it this side? Let's see the other side. This side. See how they don't quite match up? And I don't know what I did. I like recounted my stitch count and it was all fine, but it, everyone else's is fine. So the problem's definitely on me, not the pattern at all. Um, and also these kind of lilt this way and I have no idea why, um, but I wear it and I like it. I love it actually. I think it's a really, really lovely pattern. I would definitely recommend it. I will say it's only in five sizes, um, but if you increase in this section, I think you could definitely fudge it because it's basically you're creating a box and then some like a tube and then some tubes, like it's a very simple construction drop shoulder. So you could very, very easily expand it for your body if that is what you want and or need. So um, yeah, definitely recommend this pattern. I'm very happy to have knit it. And um, yeah, it really cemented my love of test knitting. It also needs a clean. Just realizing I've got something on it here. So these all need a good block before I put them away for winter, summer, summer, summer is what's coming up. Before I put them away for summer, um, I just wanted to get this video up before I started putting things in closets. So yeah, let's move on. So we are now getting into very recent knit territory. So there are going to be uh, a lot more whips. Um, and if you are interested in any of these, they are in the podcast. So I will try and um, link as much as I can where I can. So if you want more information on each of these, the information will be available to you. So the first thing I knit was another muscle burrow and I've very, very sadly lost this hat. 
Um, I have no idea where it is. I've torn my house up looking for it. It is beautiful modified muscle burrow that I knit in some thrifted yarn again. I will put up a photo. Um, I loved, loved, loved the coloring in it. And fortunately I still have enough of the yarn to make another one. And if I cannot find this, this stupid hat, I will because I love the effect. I wore it to death, apparently literally to death because it has crawled off and died somewhere in my house. Um, and I mean, my house isn't that big and honestly, it's not that cluttered. I mean, I don't think it's that cluttered. So I'm just a little bummed out about it, to be honest. But anyways, on to happier things. So I really love doing color work and I saw this pattern on Instagram and I knew I had to try it. And I am still working on it because it is an all over color work sweater. That said, it would probably be done if I had dedicated time to it, but I just haven't. <sighs> These are the sleeves. They are stunning. This is the Green Root Chunky by Camilla Vad. And it was originally a two color um, pattern and it was modified to be a six color pattern. Look at that. This is a ridiculous way to try on an arm, but here we go. I am so beyond in love. And yes, I am a little worried about the length of this arm. I have made a million modifications on this sweater and um, we're just hoping for the best. So basically I wanted to make this sweater using leftover yarn from my other colorwork sweaters. So most of this yarn is either thrifted or from Stash and it is all Cascade 220. And um, the original yarn that was intended for this was actually a bulky weight yarn and I am making it a worsted weight. Um, I'm making two sizes up to accommodate for that. I think it's gonna be fine. If I keep saying that to myself, it will be. But it is knit on, I think seven, six and a half millimeter needles. So it's going pretty fast when I am working on it. It's just not my number one project right now. So this is what I've done of the body. It's bottom up. So this is like down here and then the sleeves and then you meet in the middle, you pick it all up and then bring it in. Um, and this is the first sweater I've done with that construction. And I've heard a lot of people really hate that construction. So far, I'm really enjoying it. To be able to go round and round and round with the sleeves without like a giant sweater hanging on the bottom of it was actually a really, really nice way to do sleeves. So I would not knock that kind of construction going forward. Let's look at a bit of a fail. I signed up for another test knit and this is the Bina V-neck sweater. It's by Gregoria Fibers, who is a knitwear company, but they also have some great patterns. And I knit this from Stash using Andean, it picks Andean silk, which is no longer available. It is a um, wool, alpaca, and silk blend yarn, and I had thrifted it. So um, this was a really economical sweater. Wearing it now, I don't mind it. I don't reach for it. Um, partially, so in the test, this V-neck, for the larger sizes was way too wide. And you can see I seamed mine up. So it would have been down to here, which is where like my under boob is. And it was just way too wide. The sleeves were way too large. <laughs> um, it just wasn't suited. She didn't um, grade it right. But from feedback, she has since amended the pattern and it is working wonderfully for all sizes and she has graded it to nine sizes. So I applaud her for listening to um, feedback on this, but it just meant that because I'm a test knitter and that's okay, I kind of got the brunt of the design that wasn't necessarily <laughs> the best of designs. Um, I was also knitting like, a size up from what I usually would to accommodate the test. So that's part of the problem here as well. But I thought, I, I honestly thought once I um, like whip stitch this together, I would wear it. And I think I would wear it if I didn't despise this yarn <laughs> so much. Everything about this sweater was a giant fail. Um, so this sweater, as I said, it was the Andean silk and it's been discontinued. And I think I know why it's been discontinued because it's like the itchiest, awful yarn I've ever felt in my life. I don't have a lot of sensitivities to yarn. I thought silk and alpaca, like I love alpaca yarn almost any day of the week. This yarn, whatever combination is in here is a travesty. Like it's awful. It's so itchy. I can't wear it next to the skin and I can't wear anything underneath it because of this low, like it just drives me nuts. Um, so I don't wear it. 
I'm gonna frog it. I think I'm gonna get some black mohair and try my best to make something that I can just wear a t-shirt on underneath. So I actually love the way that this looks. I love a black yarn, such a staple. I've got enough of it to make a sweater. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna frog it. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. I hate waste. Like I hate having a yarn that I don't like. <laughs> and I can't like, I don't wanna soak it and skein it up to resell it. I'm just gonna frog it and I'm gonna read it myself and it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great, you know? For a test knit, I did it again. For a test knit that didn't go as terribly, but still wasn't perfect, I've got this cardigan. And I love this cardigan. This is the Everbloom Cardigan by Evergreen Knits. Is that what her? It's by Tess at, she's Evergreen Knits, right? Oh, her thing on Ravelry is just Tess. Anyway, she's a lovely human. She makes lovely patterns. She's a newer knitwear designer. We chat on Instagram all the time. She is one of my favorite people in knitwear right now. Um, she's just so kind and great. But I ended up testing this for her. I will gladly test any and all of her new designs as it's just such a lovely sweater. It's a drop shoulder cardigan. And um, I had intended it and it was intended to be knit in all one color. As you can tell, that didn't quite happen. Um, I ran out of this yarn. I was knitting from Stash and it is, I just ran out, ran out of the yarn. Ran to Michaels because they no longer sell this yarn. This is um, Rowan's, Rowan Softest Merino Wool. I got it at a steep, steep discount and I found out that they don't always have the right amounts that they say they do in their balls of yarn, which is annoying as heck. So um, I didn't have enough. I didn't have as much as I thought I did and they don't sell it and I couldn't find anything at my local yarn stores that were suitable. So I ran to Markle's and I found this polyester, not as great yarn. <laughs> That's it. I actually love the way it looks. I think it looks really cool. I love it with this kind of outfit with like a bra top, jeans. It's more casual cardigan. It's got a really flowery, lovely flower detail in my pockets. I think it's a beautiful construction. I will absolutely knit this again um, in a yarn that I like better. It's so sad because this softest merino wool is truly unbelievably soft. Rowan did an amazing job with this other than the fact that I didn't have enough of it and that they mislabeled the products. So I don't know. I think it was a fluke. Like, I don't think that that's indicative of all of their yarns by any means. I know a lot of people love Rowan yarns. Um, I don't know what happened with this. I truly don't. So um, anyways, this is more of an around the house cardigan for me. I do like love it, but um, there's just not as many outfits I can see myself wearing out of the house with this kind of cardigan, but I love cozying up in it um, at my desk. And that is a wonderful way in which I wear it. So I'm really glad to have this. So next I knit something that I frogged again. I ended up making a second v-neck sweater at the request of um, the woman who runs, runs Gregoria Fibers whose name is escaping me right now. I ended up making it out of cotton. I figured I was just testing the neckline. I will make um, a shirt with it. I will put a photo of what that ended up looking like. I frogged it. I screwed up the neckline with only the fold to my own, re-knit it, looked great. She did an amazing job of mending the pattern. And then um, was trying to fix something and just cut into the sweater. Just like snip, cut right into it completely ruined it. I would have to frog back to almost the beginning. I got so frustrated. I frogged the whole thing. It's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. <sighs> Anyways, let's move on to something that ended up going extremely well with absolutely no problems. This is the Thacker cardigan by, you guessed it. Sorry, Nordland. Um, this call for testers came out at the exact same time as the marzipan pullover that I tested for her and I applied for both and got the marzipan um but I was so in love with this sweater the second it came out that when you test it for her she sends you a code to get another one of her patterns for free as a thanks and this is the one that I chose and this knit up unbelievably quickly i did amend it um to work well with this yarn it's originally i think in a worsted weight this is a bulky weight she originally knits hers i think on a six millimeter i knit this one an eight um i just did I think size or two down 
and it is honestly the most perfect cardigan. I am obsessed with it. This is my beloved Project Weekend lol. I just like to wrap my body up in it. It is so nice, the sleeve detailing. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with everything about this cardigan. I will gladly make a million more. Like, look at that. Look at that. It's stunning. It's so beautiful. Um, yeah, I really, I really like it. Um, like just the way that this is done. Are you kidding me with this? Are you kidding me with this detail story, Nordland? Like what? How could anyone expect to be a knitwear designer when someone is out there just making like the most perfect knitwear out there in the world? Like why isn't she as popular as my favorite things? I don't understand. I think her knitwear is perfect. Not to disparage my favorite things knitwear. I absolutely adore her stuff. I'm making something of hers right now. I think she's incredible, but like, how do the Scandinavians just do it so much better? Anyways, I love this cardigan. I've been wearing it quite a lot. It's almost too warm to wear it, but like, I don't want to take it off because it's so soft and snuggly. And I love it. Let's keep it on for another second. So I made another muscle bro. This is out of scrap yarn. You may recognize this color and this color because they are out of my throw over. So this is the Estelle, excuse me, the Estelle worsted weight yarn. So you can tell I did not weave in the end. Um, so this is a muscle for a hat. Again, you make a two and you fold it in on itself. I wanted a red hat. I used the yellow to finish it up because I ran out of the red, which honestly is what we love to see when we're using scraps. We have gotten rid of a whole skein and it's all used. And that's what I love. So the yellow hides up in there. You don't see it. This one does cough up and it's amazing. I finished this really fast. It is the biggest gauge that the Muscleboro hat offers and it's just great. I love it. It's an amazing hat. I can't wait to wear it next winter. I've gotten just a little bit of wear out of it. It is now like 20 degrees. It's supposed to be up to almost 30 next week. So I think that this will be going back into hibernation, but I'm super glad to have it for fall. I think that's all I have for FOs, but let me show you what I'm knitting on really quick and what I finished to give this like a wholesome, full wholesome series, what I've actually finished in my first year of knitting and what I've started in my first year of knitting. So let me go grab those. So again, more details on all of these will be in the most recent episode of the podcast as I am currently knitting on all of them right now. The first of which is a sock which I genuinely cannot find right now. It is my first time doing a sock in a little circular and I literally have no idea where it went. It might be in my car. Anyway, I'll put a photo up if I can find it, but it's a sock. It looks like a sock. Um, the next thing that I am knitting on is another ranunculus and you'll recognize this yarn because this was my cardigan number seven and as I said, I just love the ranunculus so much better in a worsted weight yarn. Love the way this looks. I have knit the body and have not started the sleeves yet, but it is a super cropped length. Again, to wear with jeans and skirts. And I think I will be making uh, three quarter length sleeves with an I-cord bind off is the plan. It's knit out of Drops Air in this beautiful brown color and it's held on its own and it has not been blocked. So I'm sure this lace work up here will spread out a little bit, but yeah, I am absolutely loving the way that this looks. This is knit in the size two of the new ranunculus pattern because they came out, they've completely changed the whole pattern. Um, and I was surprised that I was a really small size in it. It's supposed to fit really oversized. I don't love my knitwear to fit too oversized. And so this is perfect for my figure. Um, and it hits just at the waist, which is where I wanted this one to hit. Um, my, I have a vision of wearing this mostly over top of dresses in the winter. So that was my intention with the length of this. And that's perfect for showing off a skirt. Let's move on. I have been crocheting a whole bunch of squares, just like square after square after square after square, so many squares. And my intention is to make a blanket out of the squares. Um, I was feeling guilty about the amount of acrylic that I had sitting around my house. Um, if you've been following along my journey, I have um, thrifted most of these and most of them I've thrifted along with wool. So they've just kind of come along the party and um, 
I'm just gonna make a blanket out of them. They're really random colors. It's definitely gonna be a house blanket. It might get um, donated to my little pupper and um, I've been enjoying it. Just very simple, self-drafted, double crochet squares. So yeah. Um, next, I am working on another test knit for, you guessed it, sorry, Northland. Um, I was gonna go off test knits. I have the most insane spring. I am leaving the country three times. I am out of the country more than I'm in it. Um, so it's just been insane. But I saw this and I was like, I it just did something to me. And I was like, I have to test knit this. So our Nerdland requires in the test knit period for you to finish the yoke in a sleeve. And I was like, I at the very least can do a yoke in a sleeve. And I am struggling a little bit to do that just because my knitting time has been like cut in half. But look at that. I haven't seen it on camera before. It's so beautiful. So this is a poetry pullover. It is an all over lace pattern. And she has other sweaters in this pattern that aren't all over. So this is her first like all over sweater. Um, and it is um, just beautiful. It's knit in West Yorkshire knitters. Um, blue face luster that I got in England. It's a DK weight. It is knit on three and a half, 3.75 millimeter needles, 3.75. Like it is teeny tiny, but you know what? The pattern's really intuitive and it's growing and I'm like halfway down the arm. And once I finish this arm, I will be absolved and I can take it at a slower pace. Um, and I'm a little worried this is going to end up sitting in hibernation just because it's such an involved knit and I just want to get onto the summer knits. Um, but I don't want it to have the same fate as that other one. But it is truly, truly, truly just like one of the most beautiful patterns I've ever seen in my life. There is someone on Instagram making it in blue and I'm obsessed with it. So if I get over the trauma of an all over lace work sweater, I don't want to cast this on again. It will be in blue. Um, but yeah, so it's due in about a week and I've got a sleeve, half a sleeve left to do until the test at least, but I'm in love, I'm in love. <sighs> One more. So another yarn that I got in England is, um, Knitting for Olive Pure Silk and I am knitting camisole number four. So I'm done kind of the front, they kind of sit there. Do you, do you see the vision? Do you see the vision? So um, this is knit in 3.5 millimeter needles, which is the smallest I currently have. So I'm gonna have to get some needles for um, doing some more summer knits, I think. But I am just in love with how this pattern is coming out. And it's a bit of a mindless knit. This is super duper easy. It's just pearls and knits. Um, I've also got, oh gosh, this was in a bag because I had taken it with me. One of the back pieces. Oh gosh, I've lost stitches. Oh no, my baby. Okay, well, um, I might need to rip back a row and re-knit it, but I've got one of the back pieces and I'm working on the second back piece before I um, do it all on the round. And I'm super excited to have this for summer. Um, do I have anything else to say? I don't think so. So anyways, that has been a year of knitting for me. It has kind of taken over my life a little bit. It is my main hobby. It is what I do when I am basically mindly watching TV or listening to podcasts or watching lectures or during meetings. And so the time really does add up to be quite a lot. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, joining the knitting community has been such a joy in my life. And I'm really thankful to have found this hobby. And I am beyond excited of what my second year of knitting will bring me. So thank you so much for coming along the journey. I hope you join me for my second year of knitting. I will be, um, some of my goals for my second year of knitting is some summer tops. Um, I would love to design something, um, for consumption or just for me. I haven't quite decided yet. I guess it depends how this whole 
thing goes. Um, I will be knitting in Scandinavia and in Scandinavia for the very first time. So that is unbelievably exciting. So I'm excited to um, bring you along with that to like, I know it's not like actually the birthplace of knitting, but like it feels like the, the home, the spiritual home of knitting. Um, so I'm excited to go to Scandinavia. And what else am I? I would really love to get my hands on some more technical knitwear books. Um, I really want to learn about not only the history of knitting, but also like the technique and other like things surrounding knitting. I'm very fascinated by it. It is like the one thing I can read in my PhD program that doesn't make my eyes glaze over. As if you don't know, you read a lot in your PhD. I'm a history PhD student. I read like 200 books a year. I don't want to read anything else, but for some reason, knitting books itch a different part of my brain that it doesn't make me want to gouge my eyes out. So like, that's great. I'd love to read more books. So if you have recommendations for that, leave it below. And I would also love to hear what your favorite thing that you've knit this year so far is. 